What's up? Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to add auth zero authentication to a Rails application. Initially, we're just going to use the bare bones, basic, just log in and log out with auth zero. And then in the next episode, we're going to add this sort of multi tenant auth using the auth zero organizations. And we'll show how to like do that maybe with custom domains, a bunch of cool stuff. So the first thing we want to do is when we come to our auth zero application, you log in, make sure you have multi-factor auth set up. The kind of app we're going to build is a regular web application. Here, we're just going to call this Rails Simple Demo and click on Create. This is going to fire up a, an application inside of Auth0. And initially, we can pick Rails. And this is a really awesome way to get started because it'll drop you right in and show you the guide that you need to follow for Ruby on Rails. But uh, we'll kind of go through all the steps here so you don't need to take uh, too deep of a look at that. Under the settings, we're going to have a domain. We're also going to have a client ID and client secret. So the very first thing we want to do is fire up a new Rails app. So we're going to say Rails new, and then uh, we'll call this, I don't know, let's see, um, auth zero demo. All right, we'll CD into our new project here called auth zero something. All right, so I'm going to open up the Rails credentials. So I'm going to say editor is vi rails credentials colon edit. And inside of here, I'm going to drop in auth zero and I'm going to have my client ID, client secret, and my domain. These are going to be the three pieces of data that we need to store at least initially. So we have our domain there. We have our client ID and our client secret. So you can copy and paste these. You don't need to copy mine or try to test it out. I'm going to delete the app right after I build the demo. So, um, all right, so now we've got some creds set up. The next thing we want to do is scroll down underneath uh, the application URIs. This, this is where the end users will be redirected um, or where the app is going to redirect as part of callback URLs for the auth flow. So the first one we want to do is add some allowed callback URLs. This is going to be HTTP colon localhost 3000 slash auth auth zero callback. And we're also going to have some allowed logout URLs. This will just be returned to the root localhost 3000 slash. So we're just going to uh, allow it to drop back into the root. We want to scroll all the way down to the very bottom and click on save changes. All right. Now what we want to do is go back to our Rails app and say bundle add. We're going to add two gems, OmniAuth um, auth zero and also OmniAuth um, Rails CSRF protection. These are the two gems that we're going to need in order to interact with Auth zero. Um, if you've watched any of the other OmniAuth <laughs> tutorials that we've done, it's very similar. So we're going to open up a new config initializer called Auth zero, and in here we're going to set up our OmniAuth provider. So in this case, the provider is going to be Auth0. So we can say rails.application.config middleware use OmniAuth Builder. Thank you, Copilot. Provider is Auth0. That's pretty close to what we want. So we'll start there. And instead of, uh, so the, yeah, so the first argument is the name of the provider. Then the second argument is going to be our client ID, which we're going to get from rails.application credentials.auth0 client ID. And we're going to do the same thing for client secret and then domain. And we have these two things. The scope is going to be um, actually inside of authorize params. So we're going to have the scope inside of there. And then our callback path is going to be where we should be redirected back to after we successfully complete the login. All right, the next step is we need some controller that is going to handle when we receive that callback. So we're going to say Rails G controller auth zero, and that's going to have a callback route and a failure route, and it'll also have a logout route, but we don't actually need um, a view for that or anything. So we'll just say callback and failure. And we probably need to do something uh, authorized. Oh, we're probably missing a comma. All right. Yep, forgot a comma here. OK, Rails G controller auth0 callback. OK, so let's open up our auth0 controller. So inside of this callback, we're going to have access to request.env 
omnioth auth. Now this is going to contain all the data that comes back in the callback. Um, so we're going to say this is going to be our auth info, and we'll store that in the session. Session uh, user info is auth info, and we'll actually get, we're going to put in the uh, the raw info, which is going to come back underneath the extra key, and then we'll redirect to um, some dashboard path, which doesn't exist yet. Rails G controller dashboards, and that's going to just have a show route. Dashboards, I spelt it wrong. Yeah. So we'll go to our routes, and inside of our routes, we're going to want our, our root route to um, home index or pages root, which doesn't exist yet. And then we'll have resource dashboard. And then we're going to have a couple of these auth routes that we need to add. So we're going to have a get route for auth, auth zero callback. And that's going to go to auth zero callback. We're also going to get uh, failure and the logout is going to go to that logout route. So we'll just add another method here, logout, which doesn't exist yet, but we'll get there. Okay, so the, the idea is that you won't be able to see the dashboard until you're authenticated. We need another controller here, Rails G controller pages. That's gonna have just the root view. And that's that'll just kind of like be our landing page. Okay, so we've got um, our root route. We have a dashboard that we're gonna hide unless you're logged in. Then we've got a couple of different auth routes. The next step is we want to actually add a way for a user to click on a button that will bring them through the authentication flow. But I guess before we get too far, um, we'll migrate the database and then let's fire this up and just look at what it looks like. So bin dev, and we're going to take a look here. So localhost 3000. Okay, so this is our pages controller, the root route for our pages controller. So let's open that up pages um, root, and we're going to add just a couple of buttons here. So we're going to say button to uh, login, and that's going to take us to auth auth zero. Um, and we want this to be method, uh, we want this to send a post request, and we also want to disable turbo. So we're going to say data turbo is false. And I believe this should bring us to the auth flow. So now we have a button here, it's tailwind. So it's like, whatever, you can't actually see. It doesn't look very buttony, but <laughs> whatever. All right, so we'll click on login. Now we're redirected to the login page. And now we can either sign up with email and password or with Google. Now, if we go back to the application um, details in the, uh, in the dashboard here, under connections, this is where you can specify like all the different things that you can use uh, for connections. So you could set up if you wanted to, you could set up like uh, log in with other social providers or whatever. There are a ton. So you could say you want to create a new kind of connection. So if you want to log in with Facebook or log in with GitHub or whatever, um, you can do so. Uh, so right now I just have username and password and I have uh, Google auth set up. So if we say um, maybe sign up with a, a username and password, wave at cjav.dev password and click continue. Um, oh, sorry, we need to sign up. So wave at cjav.dev password. And it apparently is going to verify um, that we actually have a good password. <laughs> All right. So let's see, we are logged in. Okay, we're gonna accept and we do want to authorize access. All right, so now we're logged in, um, I believe. So the the, I don't know, it's possible we're locked in. We got redirected to the dashboard page. So if we go over to the dashboards controller, um, right now we're not actually preventing access to this page. What we could do is say render uh, JSON of session user info and refresh this page. Okay, so now we're getting back like the raw data from, um, from the session that's stored uh, when someone logs in. But the next thing we want to do is just like make sure that people can only access this page if they are actually authenticated. So one way we might do that is by adding a, um, a method to the application controller called like, I don't know, um, authenticate user. This is the same name that device uses. And we could say something like redirect to slash 
unless there's a session with user info. Um, so this would, this could be our sort of before filter. Now we could say before action um, authenticate user, right? And so now if we came to this page and we refresh, uh, uh, we needed an exclamation point here. Okay, so we apparently are able to get into this route. If we open up the, um, the dev tools by right clicking and going to inspect, let's zoom in here a little bit and go to the application tab. Under the cookies section here, we could um, delete or clear all of our cookies and that should log us out. We're no longer logged in because that uh, the cookie is where we were storing our session. So if we click login again, we are logged in and we're brought back to this page. And um, so yeah, now we're like, we're fully logged in. Let's add a button so that we can actually log out also. Okay, so in order to log out, we're gonna go back to our Auth0 controller and add some, um, some logout context here. So in order to log out, what we wanna do is we're actually gonna redirect to a special URL that's underneath our Auth0 domain, and that's gonna cause us to log out. So this is really gonna be something like uh, reset session, or like session user info is nil. And then uh, instead of just redirecting to um, slash, what we, wanna, what we wanna do is actually go to a logout route that is part of, um, part of Auth0. So we need to construct a URL. So we're gonna say something like, uh, let's use the URI builder and the host is gonna be rails.application.credentials.auth0 uh, domain. And that is the right logout. And then the query string is gonna be something like return. We wanna pass in a return to, and we also wanna pass in our client ID. So that is our client ID, rails application credentials auth0 client ID. Okay, so this is the URL that we're gonna to redirect to, URL. Now we're gonna say redirect to URL and we need to allow other hosts because this um, is going to redirect to a page on, um, on Auth0. Let's also just clean this up a little bit. This is kind of nasty. Okay. There we go. All right, much cleaner. All right, we could probably extract the query into some other thing too, but, and then we also want to say status is C other. All right, that apparently does something fun with Turbo. Okay, so now what we can do is we can go back to our root HTML ERB and add another button here that's gonna be like log out. And this is gonna be something that just brings us to, I think, uh, log out or auth zero log out. Let's look at our routes. So auth slash log out, so auth log out. Yeah, this doesn't need to be a post request. In fact, this could be just like a link to um, thing, yeah. All right, so we're gonna refresh the page, click on log out, and all right, so now are we logged out? Can we go to the dashboard? Okay, we cannot go to the dashboard, so we're like totally logged out. Um, if we click on login again, we're brought through this process, wave at cjav.dev, and then uh, enter our password. All right, we're logged back in, okay. So that is kind of the entire auth flow. Um, the one other thing that I wanted to do is in the examples for, um, the Rails examples for Auth0, I really liked one of the tools that they used and that was to move this authentication thing from being a before action um, that sort of might clutter up your application controller into a concern. So let's add a new concern called secured. And this is gonna be, um, Dot rb and this will be something where we say module module secured and we want to extend active support concern um, and then by doing so it gives us this included do thing which we can add like before action authenticate user um, bang and now we can just copy our application controller method here into our secured concern. And then on our dashboards controller, we can actually just say include secured. Um, so I don't know, the, the downside of this is you can't control specific actions that are, um, that are included. Uh, I'm sorry, but yeah, specific like controller actions, but you can 
just easily add secured and it doesn't clutter everything up. So um, I don't know, this is kind of nice. All right, so let's wrap it up there. That is how you set up Auth0 in a Rails application to add login and logout functionality. In a future episode, we're gonna add some organization so we can do multi-tenant auth with Auth0. So stay tuned for that next episode.